very blessed good morning to each and every one of you. <clears throat> Welcome to the weekend, to Saturday, August the 24th, 2024, to Peace Through the Word. Brothers and sisters, this is a daily devotional ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church in Benson, Arizona of Cochise County in the United States of America, a Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod congregation. I'm Pastor Ron York of that congregation, and it is so good and so blessed to be able to welcome you to this devotional piece of ministry that is broadcast worldwide. It is broadcast here in Arizona, in the United States, over in Spain, in Europe, in Africa, in South America, in Peru, in Central America, in Honduras, in Dominican Republic, Mexico, in Asia, over in Malaysia. So, brothers and sisters, we thank you for that privilege of being able to proclaim the gospel uh, worldwide. And so thank you for chiming in this Saturday morning, trusting that wherever you may physically be, that you're having a wonderful day in Christ. And so, my brothers and sisters, this morning we're going to talk about the gospel for the contrite spirit. Well, what does the word contrite mean? That means genuinely sorrowful. Genuinely humble and sorrowful over our sinfulness. Let me be very blunt with you this morning. People, Christians, are not contrite. And it doesn't matter what label of denominational membership or whatever that you want to put on it. They're not. And all what you have to do is look at the evidence. That's not my opinion. All right? That's just based on cold, hard evidence. Which I purport over people's opinions all the time, including my own. Okay. I just look at the evidence. I just want the facts, which is why I love lawyers. So if you're a lawyer, I love you, man. And I don't care if you're plaintiff or defense. I, I did both. I love you. All right. <laughs> okay, that's another story for a different day, and we don't need, need to go there. But that's what we're going to talk about this morning as we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So please allow me to pray because that's critical. All right? So let me pray. So dear gracious Father, because you have created us anew by your Holy Spirit, please accept us, the work of our hands, and all that we have. Please grant that at all times we entrust to you our lives and receive what we are and do as living sacrifices in Christ. Make us and keep us wholly yours in him. What we give to you we offer in faith in you and in love for the neighbor. Please hear us and accept our all for the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, holy God, holy and most gracious Father, have mercy and hear us. And so, taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold this morning to pray the prayer our Lord taught us. And so, we pray. <clears throat> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And brothers and sisters, we always, always want to profess the Christian faith. And we use the words of the Apostles' Creed because in that creed we see... Christianity, very beautifully portrayed. 
we see God's creation. We also see God's redemption where he bought us back from our sinfulness through the shed blood of Christ on the cross. And then we see his sanctification where he makes us as holy as Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. So we see all those three big articles or those three big movements of God in the Apostles' Creed, which is why we say it all the time. Because Satan hates it with a passion. Okay. <laughs> so together we profess. I believe in God the Father Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate. Was crucified. Died and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so, my brothers and sisters, the passage of Scripture that our devotional is going to unpack for us this morning on this subject, Gospel for the Contrite Heart, is that of Isaiah chapter 57, verse 15. In that passage of Scripture, the prophet Isaiah has this to say. He says, I dwell in the high and holy place, and also with him who is of a contrite and lowly spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. <laughs> Man, it's pretty good stuff, amen? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. So let's see how our devotional unpacks us for us this morning. It says, the three of us stood in the living room. The man's wife had broken her marriage vows, leaving him with two children. So this is a situation where the wife doesn't want to be married anymore. So she splits the sheets, as we say. All right, this happens, and this happens even amongst Christians. All right, there's no difference. Okay, so this is what's happening. She exhibited no shame or contrition for her adultery. That's why I said earlier, I said, are Christians contrite? No, we're not. Churches are full of uncontrite people, including mine. We're not. That means we're not genuinely sorrowful for our sinfulness. We just think it's okay. It's no big deal. And if you think I'm kidding, okay, let's just look at some hard evidence, all right? The Democratic Party and their Democratic Convention embraces abortion like nobody's business. And people talk about the fact, it's my body, I can choose what I want to do with it. You're wrong. The Bible says, no, it is not your body. It's God's. He's the one who created you. And he creates the unborn. And when you do abortion, you're committing murder. They ought, to, they ought to file, a, and I was in the legal field, so we ought to file criminal charges against you and put you in prison for murder in the first degree. That's what we ought to do. And if I was a lawyer, that's exactly what I would do. And end this nonsense. And if you don't stop it, you're going to pay. You might pay with your life because I might seek the death penalty too on top of it. All right? Hard stuff. So you, people have got to learn. They've been lulled into this lethargic stuff. It's time that ends. All right? So she had no intentions of leaving the other man and being reconciled to her husband. They have no intentions of stopping abortion. Why do you think we got COVID-19 and why do you think it started in New York? Think about it. No intentions of leaving that alone. 
So he would have forgiven her, but she would have none of it. Same thing with Jesus. Slamming the door as she left. What a tragic scene. But this scene is repeated day after day after day in Christian and non-Christian homes, businesses, and every place else here in the United States and around the world. A sinner refuses God's gracious offer to be reconciled to him, to Jesus, through the blood of Jesus. People pull it off, push that off. They don't want to hear about Jesus. They don't want Jesus in their lives. Why can I say that with absolute truth? Look at how many people are leaving the church today. They're leaving the church in droves. And these are so-called Christians. So-called. It's because they label themselves as Christian and they're fo they say, I'm following Jesus, which is total fallacy. They're following themselves. They're not following Jesus and they probably never have. All right? But this is going on all the, all, the, all, the, all, the, all the time here. All right? They refuse to be reconciled to Jesus through the blood of Jesus. Although God pleads, the impenitent man or woman slams the door on them, which is what we've done here in the United States. So why do you think we got 9-11, the destruction of the World Trade Centers? You think that was just simply a political act on the part of the terrorists? No, that was a divine judgment from God on, its, on America's continued to refuse God in his graciousness of his, how he's blessed this country over any other country in the world. So he said, okay, I'm going to remove the hedge of protection around you. We never had an attack on our soil until then. God removed the hedge of protection. And he hasn't, he hasn't put it back. So then did we repent? No, we built this other tower. And then Senator Dan Edwards, who was a Democrat in, in, in the House Majority, He's not a theologian, so you never let a theologian talk scripture. You never do that. But they did. And so he quotes a passage of scripture, not knowing ex what he's doing. And he thinks he's saying a scripture to uh, revive America. We're going we're gonna to rise up and be stronger. We're going to rise from the ash heap of 9-11 and be stronger. So he quotes this passage of Holy Scripture, thinking that that's what he's doing. What he did was calling the judgment of God upon the United States for its arrogance, which is what he did. And it was signed by President Barack Obama. So then what happened? What'd we get? COVID-19. <laughs> Come on, people. Wake up. So we hear the voice of God in our reading. He dwells with those who are of a contrite heart, genuinely sorrowful for our sins. So what do we need to do? We need to repent. Okay? What does repent mean? Go in a different direction. Admit, humble yourself. Admit that we're wrong, that we've sinned, and we desire to think, speak, and act differently. Go in a different direction with God's help. If we would do that, you're going to find out things are going to get a heck of a lot better. And that's, that's what Jesus is waiting for. He's not willing that any perish, but that all people would come to repentance. All people, no matter who you are. All right. So he dwells with those who are of a contrite and lowly spirit, although angry because of our sin, for sure. For the sake of Christ, God promises to restore us. So we mourn, we're sorry for our sins in James chapter 4, verses 9 through 10. But when we do not deny our sins, our God really is faithful and just to forgive us 
of our sins. First John chapter one, verse nine. You see, he says, if, if you will humble yourself and confess your sins, I'm faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. And he is. That's the beautiful news of the gospel. All right. So allow me to please pray. So gracious Father, when you have brought us by your spirit to see our sin, please let us be humble before you, confessing our guilt and pleading for your mercy through the blood of Jesus, your son. Thank you for your faithfulness and your undeserved forgiveness. Amen. So we cry to you, O Lord, in the morning, our prayers come before you. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and uphold us with a willing spirit. Our mouths are filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. Every day we will bless you and we will praise your name forever and ever. By awesome deeds, you answer us with righteousness. O God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He redeems our lives from the pit and he crowns us with steadfast love and mercy. Hear our prayer, O Lord, and let our cries come to you. So let us pray. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger, and we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil, that all of our doings in life may please you. For into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls, and all things. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, the Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Brothers and sisters, again, please let me thank you so much for chiming in this morning to Peace Through the Word. I pray it has blessed you, inspired you, encouraged you, and given you genuine, real peace this morning throughout the rest of your life. So I pray that wherever you might be worldwide, that you have a beautiful day enjoying the blessings of our Lord in abundance. And I wish you all tremendous blue skies. <laughs>